Good to see you again, Dharma family. Welcome back to the Truth and Justice Vigil. We have been gathering here every Tuesday at this time, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Since the beginning of the trial for George Chauvin, who was charged and convicted with the murder of George Floyd. Yeah, I'm Stacy. It says that up there. Stacy, I'm a teacher at Common Ground and um, sort of one of the visioners for this space. It felt really important to have a space where we could hold our tender hearts around the murder of George Floyd, around the trial and the anticipation of the dehumanization of George Floyd and the upholding of systemic racism, white supremacy in our juvenile justice, our juvenile justice, sorry, that's my work, our justice system. <laughs> and um, many of the other subordinate or co coordinating uh, systems. And we had uh, lots of folks when the trial first started. I think our first few vigils, we had uh, more than 100 people showing up. I think there was a lot of anxiety and stress in anticipation of what was going to come up in the trial and then certainly the, the verdict. And the verdict came back swiftly. And by my account, the jury arrived at the, the right verdict. Acknowledge that there are some people who may think otherwise. Hmm. And I th think I certainly breathed a sigh of relief with that verdict. And then there was the second wave of sort of anxiety and now what? Right. So this is a single case and a single place. And as we all know, the brutality against black and brown bodies continues. So this verdict in and of itself did not absolve us from this problem of how to relate to one another or how the police are trained and supported in dominating and subordinating black and brown bodies. And so some of you have continued to show up, which makes me happy that uh, you are willing to continue to be here in space together to look at straight on and unpack our own conditioning around structural racism and to look at all of the ways that we have been complicit in these systems, in our relationships, in our communities. It's been uh, a pleasure to hear from a number of different teachers with different lived experiences, with different um, perspectives coming from different lineages. And to hear from one another, which isn't, um, which is refreshing for me, certainly to be in Dharma space and unravel or really meet at this intersection of practice and lived experience. I don't, I think this um, matter of engaged Buddhism is just 
called living, right? We are practitioners and we take our practice into our day, into our life. And those ethics, those values, this commitment we make to non-harming, to loving kindness, to being compassionate, that there is no place that we can't take that intention, that we can't live in that intention. And so it's been very sweet to have time to talk with one another here. Um, also listening to the wisdom of teachers, but also hearing the experience of one another. So joining us this evening, uh, Ralph Steele is returning. He was with us last month and um, gave an intro or a primer to the Four Noble Truths. And I expect we'll be joining us any moment now. Uh, Let me look at all of you at one time. Let me start there. There we go. Hmm. And maybe I'll take this opportunity to hear from folks if you're willing and able. If you've uh, been coming to this vigil, or even if it's your first time coming tonight, um, what you're hoping to glean from a, a space where we're talking about truth and justice and race. And if you've been, if you've been to others, which many, I see many familiar faces, if you've been, um, what has resonated with you? Um, yeah, and that you would like to see further exploration of what would support you in your work on this path. And we're small in number, so please um, unmute yourselves and share your name. Thank you for coming back, being willing, sometimes in uh, strengthening those new muscles, we can feel strained and tired and think, oh, it's getting along fine without that new muscle, it's okay. But then we see the impact when we don't wake up to this reality in our community. It's gotten sort of so close. There's no, no place to turn away from now. And so how do we stay held in our practice and allow this deep hurt, this collective trauma to transform us as a collective, as Sangha as community. And not to deepen the divide. Um, contributing to hate. It's certainly been part of our conversation. We sit in our chair or on our cushion and we set these intentions for wise and skillful action. And what does that look like in a social movement? Yes. And there's no one prescribed way or not a single path that is absolutely correct, right? For some of us, it's talking to a family member who expresses racist views. Right? And that could be the scariest, most difficult conversation, perhaps more so than marching through the streets. Right? And for some of us, it's in our professional environment, 
advocating for <laughs> policy and procedure changes to ensure greater equity. But we each in this stillness, this quiet it comes when we sit, we practice, we can see not only our own edges, but where there is opportunity in our own lives, where we can, where we have access to lean in with our influence, our varying degrees of power and authority to set change in motion. Well, and you all can help too and let your Dharma friends know we're still here on Tuesday and this continues to be an important conversation. Even though we're not presently awaiting a verdict, there may be another trial. They may plea bargain out or there may be another trial in August. But the dialogue remains quite similar. How are we opening to be transformed by our practice? To take action in the face of structural racism, oppression, yeah. So maybe we can sit for a while and um, I'll try to check in with Ralph to see what's going on. Shelly, would you be willing to guide a meditation for us? Absolutely. Thank you. Can you hear me okay like this? Great. So just finding a nice, comfortable position for the body. And it can be really supportive to take a minute to do this, to really Take care of the body. And then once we found a position, just accepting that. And with each breath, feeling into what it's like to have a body. Really inviting any movement of energy to be there, to flow, not holding on to anything. Not preventing, not standing in the way of any movement. Mm -hmm. 
Remembering this heart body connection. And any movement of heart also moves the energy in the body. This is what we might call a felt sense. So we're not resisting emotion or thought. Just making space or these natural movements, movement of thought, movement of emotion, movement of sensation. And of course, right here with the movement of energy, this is the space of learning. So we'll feel that instinct to control or protect or defend the energy of no or I want. And here we'll see if there's space to include this too. Allowing its movement. One of the beautiful aspects of practice is that it's renewing. Renewing an interest in movement and non-clinging. Renewing an interest in allowing and including.
Renewing an interest in mind, heart, and body together. So we take our seat and keep our seat like a mountain unmoved by the winds. Not afraid to feel, not afraid to include. We'll continue in silence for a little while longer.
And opening your eyes, coming back into the room with everyone. Thanks for your practice. Thank you, Shelley. I'd now like to introduce our guest teacher for this evening, Ralph Steele, who is returning. He was with us last month. I'm so happy that he could join us again from the lovely, sunny New Mexico. <laughs> I apologize for the time zone mix up. This is another one of the joys of Zoom, which we all get to enjoy and stumble through together. So thank you for your patience, Ralph, and thank you all for your kind understanding. Yani dam jitari purisa yugani ata purisa pugala. Translates to four pairs. That there's suffering, that there's the cause of suffering. It's a personal decision if you want to step up to the plate and work on beginning to stop it. And the fourth, giving a prescription, the Eightfold Path. Now, as he said, these, these, these are my closest disciples. is we all know the world, I don't know if it can be any more divided than it is now, but maybe it can, we don't know, but it's pretty doggone divided. But let's keep it simple here in the short amount of time, just in this country, and let's keep it with regards to race. English is my second language. Gullah is my first. That's Swahili, um, Haiti, uh, a little bit of French in there. Yeah, okay. Um, if you want to read a poem or some verses or some lines in that, go. you're invited to go to my website. And I believe the title of this prayer is 400 Years, yes. I was asked to write something up, and so I did. And the translation is English is there as well. I don't want to get up, but there's a picture I have, um, four years old, and I look historic in that picture. There's other pictures I have that young, that's much more livelier, but I'm just, it's like I just saw a ghost. You look at this picture, stone face. And it was the day I was, it was the day of my father's funeral. <clears throat> and he was in his early twenties. And, um, He was killed by the Ku Klux Klan. And ever since then, my mom really never liked the island, like being there, but she became a single parent. And I came up, got brought up by my grandparents, her parents. My family has ran the church to the present day, just a church neck deep in religion. I hated going to Sunday school. That's another story. And so my family name is carved on the church like a lot of families who've into the church and everything. 
So that's how I came up in my childhood years. Mode of transportation was horse and wagon. I was just a kid. So I hear all these kinds of stories. Whites and blacks are separated. Of course, there was, um, it wasn't called whites and blacks then. Let me see. Colored. Yeah, colored. Yeah, white, white was there. The word white was still there. It was quite expensive, though, because in the uh, gas station, there was two sets of bathrooms and everything. <clears throat> All that water drinking fountain and everything was separated. So racism. So coming up the current day, I, I just want to give you just a flash of Ralph, just a little, little taint. So my mom remarried someone in the military and therefore my high school, except for the last six months or so, most of it, my high school was in Japan. Got to see another culture, another consciousness, how people see the world and everything, how human beings behave. Now, present day, understanding um, it's too bad, but it's, it is what it is. I'm not telling any, anything you don't know. But if you want to work, or we, because nobody's exempt, on work towards, that's the best we can do in our lifetime, healing racism. What comes to my mind, I remember the World Health Organization got on board back in the, sometime in the 60s or 70s, I believe it was in the 60s. And you can just Google that and find out, fact check uh, with regards to, uh, they wanted to work on the same topic. <clears throat> Cause it's big, okay. Our country is not even 300 years old. We've got to keep things in perspective, understand the forest. However, it was taken from another community. Okay. So from that, all kinds of corporations, system, let's call it the systems to this day. And who runs those systems from companies to the, you name it. The majority of the human beings, let's use the word white people, okay? Now, so any person of color who want to work have to go into that system. And for like you, like all of us, our first job usually starts sometime in our early teens, somewhere around in there, maybe the newspaper or something, babysitting. But anyway, to, ha to have something, you have to go into this system. Let's just call it the system. So for people of color, uh, cultural diversity, conscious-wise, we begin, we didn't call it that. Of course, we didn't know but you, we had to adapt. And coming on up in education, the more higher you go in education, the, 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 more, the more you are with just one culture. And it's the same, the same in uh, not just education, employment as well, okay? These are just facts. And, and it was just recently I heard in about maybe um, four or six weeks ago, ABC News, or, no, somewhere, somewhere, in, yeah, I, it does matter. But any person of color, don't make a mistake. Okay, you make a mistake, it's the same as you just shot the president. 
That's how devastating it is. That's a fact. And um, I remember when these devices didn't exist, Stacy was alluded, alluded to. Okay. And so when these devices didn't exist, all we had was these big fat TVs. And there was a time when that didn't exist. I know we didn't have telephones, that's for sure. Uh, and so how did I know when a black person gets in trouble as I got older in life, and came back to this country? When I see white people looking at me very strangely and mean looking, this, ooh, something just happened. I wonder what happened. So that's how I knew. It doesn't matter where in the country, but I knew something happened. Okay. At least there was no like uh, mass killing. No one like stepped in the store and killed like 10 people, 20 people. That, that's a new thing, okay? So we're just talking, just one incident. So now, for the first time in the history of our country, we have a new generation. I like that. And this new, this new generation is teaching us to, okay, we don't like this. Okay, we want to do something about this. And this new generation, it doesn't matter what the color of their skin is. Okay. Now, however, Still, the fact still remains that the water is still wet, meaning that there's a large, huge, we're talking in the millions, whites who came up and want to know about diversity, wants to, okay? And you can have a good heart and it doesn't matter compared to a person of color, you don't know diversity, cultural diversity. You don't know it. You can be the CEO of a company and you say, I wanna make my co company more diversified. Great, but you don't know diversity. Why you don't know diversity? Because you don't know racism. It's impossible, think about it. It for people of color, like I just shared, it begun in their child. It was a learning curve to live. Okay. I'm not talking about good or bad or right or wrong. Okay. The same as during the time of slavery. This is just the how the way it was. And so it's just more modern day now. All right. So you want to learn. This is great. Now, hopefully, you would like to hopefully integrate the Dharma into your lifestyle and continue on in living your life. And those of you who are 30 and below, age 30, your bones are age 30 and below, don't know. You may end up being the next president of the country, or maybe not the next, but a future president of the country, or attorney general, or surgeon gen general, or police chief. Don't know, okay? Because I was that age as well. And we all was talking to the elders now, those of you who are over 50, over 60. Because this is one thing, I, in my head, there's only two things we have perfected as human beings. We know how to be born and we know how to die. Everything else is still work in progress. 
It's just work on progress. And so what we're doing, we're trying to, this is work in progress and trying to make it better. And I'm just trying to set the stage here so everybody can understand what's really happening before they begin to point fingers or say this or go globally, want peace and all of that. Because everything comes in peers. All right. In a few minutes, I'm going to open it up for discussion since there's only 24 of us and everything. And I'll try my best. You pretend you have a question and I'll pretend I can respond. Okay. I'm not going, I'm not going to get close to tell you I have the answer. I'm just going to respond. Okay. Because we in this together. I try my best to be transparent. You're talking to a person that experienced the 60 riots. Um, I have, this is my second wife, my other wife. She's on the other side, meaning she's not in her bones anymore. Have no kids. A woman tried to put kid, a kid on me. My cousin drilled them because I was bad. I'm seriously bad. And this kid got himself in trouble. And he ended up in prison and so for 20 years. And so for 20 years in another state, I visited him for 20 years, instead of going out there all the time, once a year, five to seven days. He's on that side of the table, I'm on this side of the table. I step up to the plate. I said, regardless, you, my son or not, doesn't matter. He's out doing, doing his thing. He's got a guaranteed job, guaranteed. Because you know, as a parent, which I was trying my best to do. You never know if it's gonna work because that eventually that person wanna go out the door and that's a war zone outside that door. And you want that person to know how to survive. And that happened to each one of us. That's why I'm saying this to you. Now he's not my son, but doesn't matter. I took care of a human being. Play, played my role. I feel good about that. Not jumping up and down. So what are you doing in there? I try my best to utilize. There's the basket of conduct, but in that basket there's speech. action and livelihood, then there's the basket of wisdom. That's understanding, or you can say having the right view, the correct proper view. And then that's, that's a big one there. Okay. And then the the second one in that basket, there's only two, is our thought or resolve, right? Resolve. It's always changing. We know that. Because as I'm speaking right now, hot ear, words are hitting your ears, and you are analyzing me, dissecting me, criticizing me, judging if it's not me or whatever's coming out of out of my mouth. This is reality. Okay. Then in the, the final basket, there's effort. However, we want to apply that. 
And then there's that word that's been so trashed now because it's in America, but that's what we do. And that's mind, mindfulness. The most utilized concept in the Pali canon and concentration. Remember, he was teaching us how to be our own physician, okay? If you can't be a physician this way, <laughs> and we so want to like to go this way, but if you can't tame this, yeah. That's huge. This is the war zone. This is the war zone, capital letters in red. So, here we are, and we have so many minutes left. Questions? How can I help? You can just speak out. If, you, if you're afraid to speak out, then put something in the chat. I see a two thing in the chat. Let me get that. Okay. And I can speak more. I have a, I have a question, Ralph, or I'm not sure it's exactly a question, but I'd love to hear more about um, where you were in your practice and if and how that factored into your your choice to mentor father a young man in this time when we are figuring out how to move closer to one another across difference and divide it seems there is something there for us to to learn from and is that is clearly a place where you made a choice you could have said no that's not my responsibility and i think part of my interest in having these conversations and listening to one another is seeing the places where we choose to be accountable to and responsible for one another Excellent, very clever. And that should generate hopefully some more, some information there. And I even see IO there. That's great. All right. Um, where was I in my practice when I made that decision? Well, my practice started in high school because my high school was in Japan, as I said. So my practice way old. I was on my way to Asia again. Yes, I was on my way to Asia to become a monastic. And so uh, doing the beginning part of making that decision, okay? And, and after, finding out, went to this top, quote, black attorney firm. And as he said, don't get me wrong now, we in the money business, but if you had a few millions, still be a question mark because he's in that body. went to the person that defended the Oklahoma City bomber. No. So decided you're going to have to do this time. Okay. And so as he began to do that time, I began to go to Asia. So that's where I was in my practice. I went to Asia there and practice more. I'll say one more point because I was still building relationship and between him and me. My time in, oh, first 
three months. Yeah, first three months in Asia, I did a lot of loving kindness practice. I did a lot of practice, a lot of hours. And when I say a lot of hours, um, uh, minimum 12 hours a day, minimum, okay? And, and in retreat, I would jump up to 18, 20 hours. But I would take a time and maybe 15, 30 minutes, not much, sometime less. Because when the knife is sharp, wow, you can do some very good surgery. Surgery. So throw some loving kindness. May you be you, may you be happy, and all of that. And so when I left Myanmar, it was Burma then, in the same kind of upheaval that's going on now. And I got to Thailand, called my wife, was because Myanmar is locked down. So you just can't do things like that. Talk to her. And she said, guess what? I don't want to say his name. Um, he called. I said, wow. I, I, tears just came down my eyes and on the phone. I said, wow, it's amazing. I'm saying this because of the power to practice is way bigger than us obviously older than us, centuries, okay? Way old. And we are talking about the practices bringing us in tune with the elements. Why do I mention the elements? Because we all live in the elements. We live in the, what we call a human body. It's made up of the, Five great elements. You know, uh, so you don't get confused as the ether, that's the fifth one or the first one. And we all live in the elements. But we forget that, and we also forget that our body also live in the basic elements. So it's learning how to get in harmony with that, with your environment. If you can get in harmony with your own environment in your own home, let's keep it begin there, keep it simple, then this work. And then here's another human being coming up in front of you. And especially if that person is a person of color, Don't be innocent, but be open and be ready to have a conversation. And be okay, it's okay to agree to say no, just like it's okay to agree to say yes, it's just another human being. But notice what comes up in you. It's very difficult because I'm not you. And I don't know how to be you, not in this lifetime. I don't have a clue what that's like experience. And so because I say that, I hope you don't try to pretend to try to be like something other than you, your own self. That's difficult. So my practice keeps me in check. I'm also a Vietnam vet. I remember walking around Arlington and there's things that you just can't put an answer to. How come they're six feet under and I'm above ground walking around? How come?
but you can continue to try to be your best. And we have a system, if you have choose to practice, that helps us, that supports us in having a conversation, um, just like I had an issue getting on the website. And, and so I contacted Stacy. that's community. Community is magic, is there, is medication, is medicine, how to utilize that. And that community can come down to, boom, a relationship with Stacy was alluring to what we're trying to. I was going to say make peace, but I, I've I've never tried to do that in my intention and and all the difficult kinds of things is to make peace because I don't know what peace really is because of yeah balance. And, okay for now it's just like the wind it can be rough and it can be seriously calm comments questions you're welcome um that question that would take a lot yes. of time to yes. yes give clarity to and i think you know that however um like I said, uh, brought up in uh, Christian tradition. So I had that as my foundation. And then as I moved into uh, Buddhist practice, that's my foundation. And I, he didn't use up all 300 plus hours of therapeutic work, but it was, you know, he, he lends some, some time in that area there. And uh, you have to have your sense of humor once you understand how life works. And because we all gonna die, that's guaranteed. And so there's, there's, there's a lot of grief. Remember the first noble truth is there is suffering. And there's many times, many, many a times where I had the opportunity to either put myself six foot, six foot under, and I don't mean me creating any suicide. That's never been on the key. Just situations uh, or being locked up for, because that's the modern day slavery for people of color, especially blacks, is the prison institution. Um, uh, and I'm not making this up, you can go, I don't know the professor's name, can't remember his name right now, but uh, who did the research on prisons in America. And um, how you can go to the Tallahassee Chan Center and get his name because he's on there. He gave the talk from his research. So you have to have a foundation and is, is and is not coming to terms but is learning how to let it be learning how to live and uh, i've went through my hell i'll just say that i won't get into the details not because of confidentiality but because of time i'm just trying to address your question as succinctly and carefully as i can as well as people teachings around that Sorry about that. Comments, thank you. Understand that uh, 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 there's no country like this. <laughs> Seriously, no country on the globe like America. Whites, Blacks, Jewish, Japanese American, 
Asian American, Hispanics, Mexican, Norwegian, <laughs> Swedes, Germans. I'm talking about a culture. There's no country like this, okay? And we are rapidly changing. And so we have a choice to work on becoming more divided or work on see if we can have a cup of tea together. This is okay, letting it be. This is why I allude, I mentioned different age groups in our bones here. Some of you may end up like uh, deciding to be a CEO of a company or the president or chief of police or an attorney and so forth. Uh, those of you who are in your 60s and 70s and 80s, up to in years, that you have a different pers perspective. That's a fact, okay? You, you, you're not going to work towards being any of that that I just mentioned. But the, uh, it's your consciousness. I'm speaking to everybody now. It's your consciousness. And you need to understand and know what disrupts you. What you have issues with. And like you just said, my Ralph, I want to fix it. Well, we're not talking about right or wrong. If you want to fix it, then fix it. Try your best to do, you know what you're good at. And, but don't tr be a, uh, Oh, like don't, I'm, I'm a meditation teacher. I, I've got 40 plus years in clinical work, working with the human being's mind. Um, and however, I like to put my hands on things. And so I, I get myself on a project where I'm building a greenhouse. So I'm at the point where I have, I'm putting concrete in a post and the ground. I dug the ground. However, never poured concrete. I've seen concrete been poured many, many times, many, 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 many times. And so I went and got somebody who know how to do that. I don't pretend I know how to do that. I want to fix it. Yeah, but that doesn't mean mean I'm fixing it, but um, I am fixing it. And so you can fix something indirectly if you can, if you can, okay? And then there's all the things where, with regards to um, working on having a balanced mind as you're doing all of that. Some people call it balance, some people call it equanimity. It all depends. You have the practice. Hopefully you have the practice and you have the skills and you're utilizing it. Remember, you're learning to be a surgeon. And this is the same, the, the noble truth. That's what that's about. However, there's surgeon who calls on other surgeons and other specialists to support them. And so it's nothing wrong with, I want to fix it. Nothing, ask, commend to you for doing that, but utilize your wisdom. You're welcome. You're welcome. What are you doing in there? 
<laughs> right now. What are you doing in there at this very moment? What are you doing in there? 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 Yeah. I, I will share, he also offered at the, the very end a homework assignment or challenge even, if you will. The next person or next time we look at someone to look at them until we see ourselves. And that has stayed with me as well. I think that also comes back to the question though, what are you doing in there exactly? On the cushion, what, what, what are you doing? <laughs> so I, I appreciate the, the provocative inquiry Ralph, very much. I'm so glad that you could come back and be with us again. Uh, may any fruits, any benefits that came of this time together, may that care and wisdom radiate out to our friends and families, and communities that we are part of, and all beings near and far. May all beings know the source of happiness and peace. And Ralph will be returning again uh, to talk more with us next month. Um, with uh, Common Ground uh, offers uh, any dana that is offered to teachers two thirds of the dana and retaining one third for operations of the center. Common Ground is entirely donation based. If you would like to support uh, Ralph, uh, you can visit the website. Shelly has dropped the link into the site into the chat, I'm sorry, and you can name Ralph, who has generously offered his Donna to support women experiencing homelessness. So um, thank you so very much, Ralph. And Ralph has a word, he has, yes. <laughs> um, thank you, thank you so much. I, I yeah, I can return but we have to rearrange the dates. Okay. Because we'll yeah, I can return. I, I, you all are very special people. We all are special people, and you all are extraordinary special. If you wasn't, I wouldn't spend my birthday with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm very <laughs> clean and I'm clear. All right. Just don't jump up and down about it. I'm very quiet about this, but yeah, I'm sharing that with you. So um, yeah, my bones are 71 today. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we can talk about that uh, a different time and different day, but the, the, uh, between now and then is, I'm, I'm, I was, I'm from a, a tradition where we talk less and practice more because it's about practice, learning how to walk your talk, and, and we're missing that. We are a very elegant country uh, with regards to the higher education, we're, we're um, the top five on, on the planet. Lower education, that's a different conversation. But um, with regards to our intellect, we are, we are quite good at that, extraordinarily. Walking out talk, whoa, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say, thank you. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you everyone for joining. Uh, we're back here again next Tuesday, another wise and beautiful teacher, Shante Small's Paradigm. So if you have appreciated uh, the wisdom and experience of teachers whose background and lived experience may be different from yours, please keep coming back. And 
engaging in this important and necessary work. Take good care of yourself, Sal. So good to see you. Good to see you too. You too, Ayo. <laughs> Thank you, Ralph. Thank you, everyone.